All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 40th installment of Chestnut Chat. Appreciate everyone being here with us um, today. Uh, we have a treat for everyone. We're going to be talking with uh, Rod Murphy, one of the filmmakers for the Chestnut documentary, Clear Day Thunder, as well as Mari and Jules, who have been kind of integrally involved with a lot of aspects of, um, of that production. Um, I'm Kendra Collins. I am not Sarah Fitzsimmons. I apologize for those of you who are hoping to see Sarah's smiling face and, and curly haired head this morning. Uh, she's off um, camping with her family. And so you get me. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, just a couple quick housekeeping things this morning. I think many of you have been on here many times and know the routine. Uh, but for anyone new, welcome. Uh, the way we like to run these is if you have comments for the good of the order, things you'd like to just uh, mention, feel free to use the chat function. Um, we've been having a great time this morning seeing where everyone's from. Uh, that's not something I've actually seen on a chestnut chat before, so that's been kind of um, enjoyable. Feel free to keep uh, introducing yourselves that way. Um, but if you have a legit question that you would like us to get to, um, or specifically for one of our panelists, please use the Q&A function. Uh, we've got Cassie here helping with the Q&A this morning, um, but we'll do our best to try to answer most of those questions on air if we can, and um, if not, we'll try to get some answers typed out to folks um, as uh, as we go along, and we'll work do our best to get this all wrapped up by one o'clock and get y'all off on your merry ways on your Friday afternoon. So with that, I think, um, we're, Jules, are we going to start with you? Sure. All right, we'll take it away. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're really excited about um, sharing this film, the documentary about the American chestnut, Clear Day Thunder, rescuing the American chestnut with you all. Um, it's, it's definitely been a, um, a, a, a lengthy, educational, fun, entertaining um, process. And it's taken us a, a number of years. And so we're very, very excited to get to this point today where we can share a lot of information with you all about, about the making of the film and about upcoming screenings and how you can participate in screenings and in other ways. So that's what we'll be covering today. We, we aren't gonna be showing the film. I think there was some confusion around that, but um, that, that this isn't to show the film, this is to just talk about kind of the, the behind the scenes and, and also um, where we are today with it and, and what's to come. So, and, and how, again, how you can get involved. Um, and Lisa actually wanted to join us today because she also had a substantial role in the making of the film, but she is in Massachusetts celebrating a long time member there and they will be having a showing at that event. So. Uh, we'll miss having her here to talk about it as well, but um, but that's why she couldn't be here. And I, I think they're probably showing the film anytime now. Right. So 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 that's happening. That's happening too. So um, yeah. So anyway, thanks thanks again for being here. Uh, you want yeah. So we we really want to be sure to thank a couple of our sponsors who who helped fund the um, the film and. Um, there we go. And um, one of which is New Leaf Paper and then the James G.K. McClure Educational and Development Fund. So we're very grateful for their um, financial support in, in the making of the film. Uh, so as you'll see on your screen, for those, some of you probably know and are familiar with the documentary website, but I'm guessing many of you aren't. Uh, that is the, the link. Uh, to the documentary website. It can also be accessed from TACF's um, website, which is acf.org. Uh, so either way, but there is the, the link and we encourage you to hop on there and learn more about the film and uh, the contents right there you'll see on your screen. There's information about the trailer and you can view the trailer um, from the website. And there's information about some of the participants in the film, the luminaries, um, the film crew and again about uh, screenings. Um, Mari updates the, the blog there regularly and you can subscribe as well to get updates. So, um, and Mari will be touching on a lot of this in her presentation, but please do um, visit the website 
um, to get information when uh, use that as a resource when you when you need it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move right along and introduce Rod to everybody and just give you a little bit of background about Rod. Um, I should also say that Adams Adams Wood also partnered with Rod in the making of the film, but he couldn't join us today. So, um, but we're lucky and and grateful to have Rod with us. Um, just a little background about Rod. He has won 16 awards for five of his documentary features. Uh, he directs and produces video content for commercial and nonprofit clients like Outward Bound, American Express, the NBA, ESPN. So pretty impressive. Um, I think United Way. Uh, his work has screened internationally on TV and streaming services. And that's a lot. So uh, we we really enjoyed working with Rod and Adams in the film. And I'm going to let Rod uh, talk to you all about his experience in the making of the film. So take it away, Rod. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I been doing this about 25 years now. I sort of got into it accidentally. I, I ended up living in LA. I, I actually tried film courses in college and didn't really like it. But uh, I ended up living in LA and then everybody in LA, if you're looking for work, ends up being a PA on something. And so I just worked on some films and TV and animated shows. And eventually I just made my own film. And uh, been almost 25 years later doing the same thing pretty much every day. <laughs> and uh, it's it's something that I really like, but it is a job. It's tedious and it's kind of strange. You know, it's a weird thing to tell people because it seems like it's just sort of a fantasy that you're making movies. But it's, what I like about it is that you're thrust into these worlds that you'd never you'd never know otherwise. I'd never know any of you. I'd never know anything about any of the stuff that I do, but it, you just learn a lot and you're, you're put into the situation where you meet really interesting people, this, this movie, especially. And, and I, I really enjoy that. And um, I just hope, hope to keep doing it. And that's about, that's about it for me. I'm, I'm pretty simple work as much as I can work, work on things that I like to work on. When you live in Asheville, you have to learn all the different facets of production and post-production because there's not a big uh, infrastructure here. So I kind of know how to do a little bit of everything, but not too much of anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think um, that's about that's about me. That's about it. <laughs> anything you want to share about, and I forgot to mention too, that if anybody has questions for Rod specifically, he can't, he can't stay with us the whole time. I forgot to mention that. So he has to hop off a little early. So if anybody has questions for Rod, Please um, put them in the Q and A, uh, and and we'll we'll try to get those answered before he before he hops off. So, um, Rod, anything you want to say about the making of the um, of Clear Day Thunder specifically, or any of your experiences around that? Well, it's been it's, you know making anything during the pandemic is kind of challenging in its in its own on its own, but making this film. Just the science in general was something that I I still don't completely have my head on. But what I think we tried to do with this is just focus on the people that are doing the work and the people that are so passionate and interested in this this whole phenomenon. Really, I mean, it just that, so we focused on the the kind of community that you all have, and that that's something that I'm very comfortable doing. The science, not so much. I'm interested in it, but it just kind of goes over my head a lot. So if you have science questions, I think Jules is the one to ask. No, not I. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody besides me. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, great. And if anybody has any... Uh, well, I was going to say, um, Rod, there was a question. Uh, oh, there's a, been a couple questions, actually. Um, anonymous attendee. Mm. maybe that's johnny chestnut i don't know um <laughs> would like to know how how did we find you how did you get connected with this work and the topic for the documentary i think like it was almost 10 years ago adams the other my colleague on this and i did a job for the tacf uh we did like a psa 
with Chuck Lavelle in it. He's a he's a keyboard player for the Almond Brothers and the Rolling Stones, who's a big American Chestnut Tree supporter. And that was great. And I think we've just been in touch ever since. I mean, I think Asheville's a small town, so you know they're, they're our neighbor, kind of neighbors with Jules and Adams has been friends with folks at the the TACF forever. So we've just been sort of in the background for a while and when this came up we just kind of jumped at it because it's such an interesting project with a lot of different facets kendra did you want me to answer some of these other couple of questions yeah if you want to because i'm not i feel like we kind of covered how rod got turned on to american chestnuts i think that was kind of rolled into his last response um but if you want to take the next one that would be great Okay, I can address, I don't want to eat up Rod's time. But we are going to address your question about DVDs um, in a later part of this presentation, Marcy. So just more to let you know that. All right, great. Well, I'll leave that open and for now, Mari, and just so we don't forget about it. And then, <clears throat> okay. yeah, Got it. great. All right, I'm going to go away again and let you guys keep talking. <laughs> Rod, did you want to talk a little bit about the development of the film, the things that you were doing behind the scenes, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, trying to trying to use some of the existing material that was already in place, like some of these interviews with with uh, Jimmy Carter and E.O. Wilson. That was one of the first things is try to figure out how to how to incorporate some of these luminaries that we that you had already captured before we came on board was was one of the first challenges. But it was a great challenge because these names everybody kind of knows. And then trying to find a way, trying to figure out how to balance the science with the, the human parts. And so just, just doing a lot of reading and asking around. And once people know you, you, you're doing something about chestnuts, they just kind of thrust themselves at you. I've, I've never really had anything like this happen. I've done a lot. I've worked on a whole lot of other films. And this one's unique that way. When somebody knows about what you're doing, they just share with you their, their story about chestnuts how they're related to it and and some of the some of the pre-production came from that like oh you know this you know that person or this is interesting to you like th there's there's routes we went down in this production that that didn't make it into the film but they're still interesting like we met some some guy I think he was in Waynesville who has like a house that's all chestnut inside and he's just I don't even know how we ended up in his house. We were doing something else. And next thing we know, we're like in this guy's house and he's showing us every, all the, all the, the, the uh, molding and everything in his house is made out of chestnuts. And this is like a common occurrence that happened throughout the production. Once it's out there that you're kind of on the hunt looking for chestnut people, they just appear. I don't know if that's common in your, your, uh, career jewels that people once they know what you do they just tell you their entire <laughs> chestnut relation but that's kind of yep. like every documentary it just sort of happens but I, I i finding the folks that really could be the voice of it was was the real uh trick and and for us rex was you the jewels and you and lisa love rex and everybody who knows him loves him but he the, he was you know, 500 miles away or something. So it wasn't as easy and he's, he's a little bit older. So there, there was that challenge, but once, once we met him, it's just, there's no denying how great of a representative for chestnuts he is. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I count him as like a friend now, you know, going up that way sometime this summer and he wants us to come by and just like, it's amazing. Just, just getting to do this job and meeting people and becoming friends, lifelong friends with folks. But he was kind of the 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 the, the way in for us because he has such a, a rich history with y'all, and then finding somebody of a different generation was another challenge. And we found somebody that works with y'all that could kind of be the voice of the current generation, and then just sort of balancing their stories back and forth while all also showing other other factions from different parts of the country that are into this and in their stories and just kind of speckling it around it's just kind of like a balancing act and i mean i, I don't know how much I don't, I don't think we want to give away too much about it we want you all to see it and experience it but there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of chestnut folks between here and maine and <laughs> and beyond up, i guess actually up into canada right 
neck and down into Alabama. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I still can't believe like I, it is. There's not too many days that go by where somebody doesn't come up to me and ask me about the chestnut film. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not living it like you all are Jules. I, I can't imagine you. <laughs> well, Rob, we did have a few questions um, that your conversation has sparked. Right on. Um, one, one question is, was there input from the indigenous, indigenous nations on the chestnut perspective? Yeah, we spent some time in Cherokee with some folks out there. And one of my favorite shoots was we went up to the, the orchard they have high in the mountains up there and just spent a, a day with a, with a couple Cherokee elder type folks and just telling me stories in the back of this truck and chasing them up the this mountain to this this orchard is just amazing the stories and just breathtaking beautiful place and their voice is in there and they and their their way of life is trying to get back to the using the chestnut for their diet for their health for to try to keep their culture and that that's in the film and, yeah. and just more friends more people that i count as friends because of this project it's like it's 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 been great that way. Yeah, and and right, and we have a, a, a really good partnership with um, the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians, and we do have an orchard in the Koala Boundary um, with with them. So we're doing some really good work um, together. With mm. that group. Rod, there was another question. Thank you for answering that. Uh, the other question, which this is going to be a little bit gray, but how long was the research phase of the project before filming? That might also be a question answered by Jules. I, I'm personally still researching. <laughs> I don't think it ends until the, the, the first real screening. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, it, it, it was. I, I'll probably touch on a little bit of that and could come back to that question, I think, at, at the end. But um, it was quite the the process, and um, one of the one of the areas I'm going to touch on are the goals that we had, and that that will be included in in there, I think. So um, hopefully I'll hit that. But if if I don't, and and um, you know any more, just just let us know, and we'll address it again after the presentation. Um, so yeah. Um, Let's see, there was a question here about the science. As a scientist, yes, really like to see. Um, just, yeah, okay, so can everybody see these questions? I think everybody can see the questions, right? Um, so somebody's asking about um, including um, more, more of the science. And we, so this, again, I will be touching on this a little bit as will Mari, but we, that was one of the areas of researching how we wanted to um, produce this film. We want this film to be for a, a broad audience. And because again, I'll, I'll talk about it in the goals, but one of, one of our goals is that we want to raise awareness and, um, you know, and, and invoke curiosity. And, and so we really wanted to make it accessible to a, a wide range of folks to get people involved and and to get people to come to us and start asking the questions and learning more and about the science. And so we are planning also at some point, and we, we don't know when yet, but we're also planning to develop shorts from the film and from other footage that may not have been included in the film that we can, that we can that will also be produced and that can be shared. So some that will touch more specifically on the science, some on younger folks and, you know, for educational purposes for young people and things like that. So that's in, that's, that's the future outlook and our hope is to produce some, some other shorts that, you know, hit more of the specific areas of our work. Currently, the film is about 52 to 53 minutes in length. I'm answering the question for Daniel Getman. Um, but yes, we're going to go back into those various versions um, in the second part of this presentation. So while we have Rod on the call, we're at 1150. We wanted to give each person a 30-minute segment um, if they need it also for questions and answers. Rod, 
Were there any mm -hmm. other questions? Oh, here's another one. Are environmental regulatory agencies represented in the film? Um, represented, I mean, we, we talk about the Darling 58 and the work at SUNY ESF. And so the researchers, um, Bill Powell, um, with the American Chestnut Research and Restoration Project at SUNY ESF is, is in the film and is part of the film. So um, the, I think the deregulation process is, is, I don't know if the deregulation specifically is talked about because we're trying not to date the film. That's another one of our goals is to keep the film as current as possible. And so we also had to really be um, strategic around that. Uh, so but yes, I mean there is there is there is conversation about about the the work at SUNY and the D fifty eight transgenic tree. All right, let's see here. Any other questions, um, Rod? While we still have you, any particular pieces that really stood out to you in all the footage? Because I know you spent hours and hours between several different states. Mm -hmm. um, and talking to a lot of people. Was, was there anything particular that stood out to you as a filmmaker compared to maybe your other projects? Um, I, mean, I think we, we approached it like a like a traditional documentary. I was just wondering as I was talking, does it is it does everybody here know Rex Man? Is that because I used I talked like he's so familiar. I wonder if he's familiar to everybody that's or at least some of the folks that are attending today. I'm sure a number of folks do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Just a little worried about he, my. <laughs> no, he's he's kind of our spokesperson. I mean, there's a okay. reason we call him our chestnut evangelist. I mean, he, yeah, he's. Well, I love. I mean, the parts that I love doing with Adam is we we go to like plantings or pollination, or we go up to up up to Virginia to the farm and just seeing people do the work. And it's it's different than doing a corporate video where people have to be there. People seem to actively want to be involved with the chestnut tree, with American chestnut. It's a little different than a than a regular job or a hobby. It's just 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 feeding off their enthusiasm. And, and in the cases of some of the scientists, I mean, it's I just like being around nerdy people that know a lot more than me, so I can usurp some of it. You know, I tried to, but I just think it, it's it's an interesting world that isn't really visited, which which hopefully translates to a broader audience. Like that's what I look for when I look for a film. It's like, I don't know much about that, but maybe the trailer or something I read sparks me to go want to check it out. And I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to be like that, where you just are put into these lives of these folks that just, it is their way of life. And so, I mean, it, it, there's not one shoot that stands way out, but collectively there, it all just kind of feels like a family, you know, I don't know if we're, you know, that that's it just feels like everybody has these shared interests, no matter age or demographics or what. It just everybody has this shared passion for this bringing this tree back. And now that it seems very eminent and hopeful, it's even because just when we started this before the pandemic, it didn't seem quite as hopeful as it is today. It just feels like it's going in the right direction to bring this back. So it's even more exciting to, to get out there and watch people's reaction and watch their, their work so hard at doing what they're doing. Did that answer the question or am I kind of skirting I me? So. I think you did. And Rod, I will say right there on. was a chat from somebody interested in meeting you. So anybody that wants to find Rod, you can go to collectiveprojects.tv and find uh, Rod's website and see his list of work and how to contact him. Sure. So I just want to respond to that. Um, and then we had a question. Mm -hmm. Were you involved in the Chuck Lavelle, the tree man film? No, I wish I was. I watched it on a plane <laughs> not long ago. It looks like it's a fun movie, but but that's how we kind of knew he'd be so good in the role we, we put him in just because he's he's just such a pro. I mean, we threw something at him and he, uh, certain people just have that skill and he's got a skill that he can just turn something around and just make it very personable. Yeah, he, he was a wonderful person. He, I can see why he's one of your, your spokespeople. Yeah, he's a natural for sure. 
We have another question. It says you mentioned that footage of Carter and presumably also of Twitty and Parton came from earlier projects. Are there other DVDs in your library where they have appeared earlier? Maybe we can touch on their appearance because Twitty, you did go and film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Dolly Parton was also part of this part of, mm -hmm. of we didn't film it. They her handlers took care of that and had it filmed. But that was that was also part part of this. Um, I don't state. know how to answer that one other than the, the Michael Twitty part was just part of our, our research, trying to find somebody who could speak historically about about what the American chestnut meant to people, you know, 100 years ago or so. And he, he was he could he, he we could make three other movies with the, the material we got from him. He's his brain is humongous. <laughs> so it, like sometimes when you're talking to these people that are so well versed, it's it's a little intimidating, but it, just trying to bring it back to the people, why the people involved are doing this work was what kind of grounded us. Like, what, what is your interest? Why are you doing this? Why do you, what, what gets you up to do this every day? And he was amazing. I mean, I'm still thinking about things he told us in that interview all the time. He, he is a culinary historian. So he talked about the significance of the, the nut as a food source for, mm -hmm. And, and when the when the tree was at its prime before the blight and um yeah it's really interesting and uh, the, the carter footage was prior to this and then the dolly parton footage was prior to this but the twitty <laughs> footage did come from um, well the, the dolly parton footage was part of this oh. but we didn't film it oh god because yeah. they yeah they filmed it but it's yeah. also uh eo wilson and barbara king solver as far, as far as a few other luminaries that was that was already shot when we came on board but they they both add something to it you know just instantly you're drawn in by their names and, and what they're saying they're both so sharp in, in in their their points about the american chestnut yep definitely natural reading of american chestnut school no gml that crossing yeah um yeah i i, I would say the question yeah, let's save that question um, from Ken. For later. Yes, oh. for later. So Ken, we do we do talk about traditional breeding in the film. Yes, that is covered. It isn't mm -hmm. just about it isn't just about the transgenic tree. So both are both are um, covered. Okay. So I guess that answers that the answers question. That, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see. I think we only have. The one question about the DVDs, which I will get into later on. All right, so we have Rod for another couple of minutes. Um, any other questions for Rod? In the meantime, what is the significance of the name for Well, now that we don't want to we tell you. We can't give that away. <laughs> that's that's something that you'll you'll figure out when you when you see it. Uh, it's always just, like it, I love it, movies where you figure it out. You figure out the title in the movie. Yeah, and and let me tell you. It took a while to get there. Okay. Um, we went through that's a that's a chestnut chat in and of itself. The, the amount of the amount of titles we came up with and went through and and it was it was really it was really fun actually. We got a lot of laughs and we had some good stuff and it was just it was a real process of 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 landing on a title and it took us it, it took us a while. Well, one um, thing that so, is difficult is is coming up with a title before the complete film has actually right. the story. You know the story outlines, and as the story develops, though, there are nuances and things that happen that change it a little bit. And so, really, the film title was one of the last things because of that. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that the film title ideas that were from the beginning are nothing like what we ended up with and it's actually really good this way so mm. you do need to watch the film for the film title but it will make sense to you when you do yeah we don't want to give that one away <laughs> i um i want to hop in with a uh question that popped up in the chat because i think this is another one that rob rob might be able to address uh, Jill's wondering, how would you describe your particular vision, vision for the film? Who was your target audience and what message did you want to share? 
Jules, I think you kind of touched on this a little bit already, but if you guys want to elaborate, well, that would I be was actually really going to jump into that next. Yeah. Oh, all right. I well, then we can put a pin in it. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be that'll be touched on in, in my my part. So good question, though. And in fact, great questions. Great I'm question, because we're going to yeah. address it. <laughs> Yeah, those are the best ones <laughs> for us, for us. <laughs> we were planning on that one. We're, we're prepared for that one. <laughs> All right. All right, so if that's good, then we're gonna let Rob go. Of course, Rob, feel free to stick around, but I, I know you had some time limitation. Um, and if there's any other questions that do come up for Rod afterwards, you know, you can pop them here and we can always um, address those later. It, I can yeah. even do a blog update. We will, and I believe this whole session is being recorded. Correct, Kendra, and then it goes on YouTube. Yep. We are being recorded. It will, this uh, will be posted along with our 39 other chestnut chats on the website. Um, yep. So it'll be available for, for everyone to view post-production. Yeah, okay. and Rod, thank you for, for coming and joining us today. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having your, me. You're part of the story. <laughs> Thanks for having me. The, the whole thing's been... It's been great. It's been really wonderful to learn about it and to meet all these people and to meet all of you. And I, I hope the, the movie gets out there and everybody enjoys it. And yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank <laughs> thanks. Thanks Have for all. Bye. See ya. Okay. So I guess I'm up. So uh, I, I, I don't think I introduced myself when I first started speaking to everybody, but I'm Jules and I am the Director of Communications at the American Chestnut Foundation, and I just started my seventh year there, so I've been there for a minute, and uh, it's been a wonderful learning process that and, and um, growth working there, and um, I really believe in the vision and the mission of the foundation and believe in the work that we do. And, I work with an excellent group of staff and excellent chapter volunteers and chapter leaders and just our partners. It's just, I'm honored to be part of this foundation and part of this mission um, toward restoration and and it's gonna happen. And it's just, it's just a, a very hopeful, optimistic mission um, and we're moving in the right direction. So that's that's who I am and a little bit about uh, about me. So um, yeah, so back to the film. And again, I hope that some of my um, comments will answer uh, several of the questions that were asked um, when Rod was, was speaking. But so we, we had, during early conversations about the development of the film, we solidified three firm goals, outcomes um, for the film. So one being to compel and invoke curiosity. Um, we wanted to do that by telling obviously a compelling story and that will reach a, a broad audience that I mentioned earlier. And we wanted that to tell the story of the whole tree. Um, so I know that there are a lot of people out there that may be familiar with American Chestnut, uh, but one thing I've noticed in talking to people is they know a piece about the plight of the tree, but they don't know the whole story. So that's that's that was one of our goals to to really tell the whole story, um, past, present, and future, so that there's a, a solid understanding, hopefully at the end of the film, um, as to why this, you know, reintroducing this tree is so important. Um, and then the second to educate and inform, and one of the most uh, common responses I get when I tell people that I work for the American Chestnut Foundation is, you work for a place that's trying to save one tree? <laughs> I mean, I get that most of the time. I would say 90% of the time. That's the very first question that, that comes out of their mouths when I, when I say that. Um, it feels like just, just um, uh, telling people what I do often turns into uh, market research because <laughs> I realize what people know or don't about about the tree and uh so so that question to me was a clear indication that most folks don't know again the whole story of the tree uh so 
producing the docu documentary that educates is is key to answering to answering the question why is saving this single tree species so important so that's the other goal that we wanted to have is to answer that question um and so <laughs> maurice telling me when to turn the page uh yeah and so then we've got the um the call to action so we want people to feel inspired and motivated to act after they see the film we know that again a lot of people who are going to see the film won't know much about the story of the tree so we're hoping that at the at the end of the film people are going to want to get involved that's really important because we want to grow um engagements and membership and um we just we just want to grow the you know the story of the tree and its reputation. Um, we also, as I mentioned earlier, we want it to be an we want it to be evergreen. We want it to to stay um, you know as current as possible. So we had to be really careful about the specifics of the science, as science is <laughs> constantly changing and advancements to science are are constantly happening. So we, we, we had to be really, we wanted to be very strategic um, in that. Uh, and again, we wanted, to, we, want, we wanted to appeal to a general broad audience um, and first in this film and then produce in the future, produce shorts, um, like I mentioned earlier, that will, um, that will cover some of the more specifics and the different arms around our restoration efforts. Um, the end result is we we want it to define um, TACF's mission to return the iconic American chestnut to its native range, and that's that that was that was our goals. Um, so I think I'm ready for the next slide. Mm -hmm. So how this mission how this mission impacts everyone? Okay, so that this mission, um, our mission, is it's relatable. So on, on some level, most people, uh, well, we think everyone on some level understands the significance of healthy forest. Uh, everyone is impacted by trees and has some understanding of the growing threats to our forests. Um, so the restoration mission of the American chestnut can be applied so it goes back to that whole one tree. It, it goes beyond that. And um, we think that, you know, we're, we're, we feel that the restoration of the American chestnut will also um, impact positively other threatened tree species. And that this will kind of set the stage to, to do that. And so that's another really hopeful part of this mission and, 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 how, it, and how it impacts um, everybody. Um, and then achievable. Um, the, the film shows true progress toward the restoration of this tree. We're not stuck, we're not, you know, I mean, yes, science takes time and growing trees takes time, but we're even advancing in, in, in the, the, you know, how quickly we can grow trees <laughs> with high light. And so we're, our advancements are, are, are you know, I feel like, in the film, we you know we show the progress that we're making toward the the eventual restoration of the tree, and so we want people to know it's it's achievable, um, and then tangible. I mean, once it's restored, future generations are going to benefit from our vision of a robust eastern forest return to its splendor, and that will be a, a reality at some point. So. Uh, so all of these things are are were important too in, in the in the making of the film. Sorry. That's all right. Uh, and then um, so audience. Um, these are examples of the types of audiences that um, might be well that would be I think very interested in in Screen. screening the film and uh, yeah offering showings. So if you're thinking about who to invite um, to to screen the documentary. This is a, a good starting point, this list. And of course there are more, and um, you may wanna reach out to um, these kinds of organizations if, if they're in your area and offer the opportunity to, to screen, to, to host a screening. And so 
that and and Mari will go into to the screening, um, to the to screenings the film and how that works and the process around that. So um, that's my that's my bit. I'm going to introduce Mari. Are we going to hold questions? I think till after your. I don't know. We no, can... I think go ahead and answer some questions. Um, okay. Are there any questions for Jules? I do realize that there was a possible misunderstanding about audience. So there was the audience for who might be great at screening the film versus who the audience is for, for the film viewing itself. So that the audience filming for the general public, when we say a broad audience, what we meant is not only capturing young minds, but also people who are on the periphery of maybe having that information about the American chestnut or are interested in conservation mm -hmm. and forest ecology who may be on that periphery, this kind of film can educate them even more. So that's a great audience for this film as well. And then I'm seeing this question from Margaret as the film did, did distributed to legislators. That's something that Lisa would have been able to offer a much a better answer to. I mean, yes, we, we are actually having that conversation, um, but, Lisa would have, would be the one to to answer that. So we'll, since this is being recorded, and I'm sure she'll watch this, but we'll I'll let her know about that. That's a that's a good question. And then John, is the story told of how the plight of the chestnut would wound up first attracting her darling's attention? It doesn't go into that much detail uh, around her, John, um, but yeah. So the answer is no, not in that version of the film. Yeah. That was another challenge in developing the film was the, the balance between a broad audience that may not be able to, is interested in all the detail about the science. So what we determined is that we would have two other versions um, and one that is more in depth about the science because we had so much footage and the history of the, the history of the science that has been collected over the years. This film has actually been in production for quite some time. So at first, a lot of it did focus on the science. And then in order to reach a broader audience, we wanted to tell the story of the people. So that's where the balance came in. Do we focus on the science? Do we focus on the people in that story so that we can reach that group? So there are other versions being planned, shorter versions that will focus on the science. We also know there's a lot of educators out there um, interested in the film from high school through college and so forth. Yeah. And we wanted to make a version that was suitable for educators. Again, because there's just so much footage there were, this could have been a three hour film. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we, we decided to do it that way. And yes, historical societies are a great audience and we actually do have a few screening that. And Daniel, I'm gonna get into your question about, no, this is not the only way to see the film. I'm gonna get into that in just a minute, Daniel. Great question. Right, right. I mean, we're, we, we wanna promote the film through the screenings um, first because we wanna get the word out. But yeah, Mario will go into more detail about that. But yeah, another, Really great questions. So thank you all for, for your interest and for asking the questions. So um, so this is Mari Peterson and Mari is the founder of Marketing Outpost here in Asheville. And we actually hired Mari to help us um, produce and promote the film. And I for one am really grateful that we did that. Um, <laughs> she, she has, she has um, been invaluable in this whole process with us and the communication, helping us communicate between the between Rod and Adams, the filmmakers, and um, it it has really been a um, a time consuming and interesting. lengthy, interesting process. So so, but Mari has 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 really stepped up and her team, and they've just worked with us and and been wonderful to work with. Uh, she's also worked with staff and chapters on our social media platforms and helped us in improving those and helped chapters start up their own social media platforms. So we're just really grateful for, for she and her team. And um, she actually also built the film website that she's going to talk some about and that we talked about a little bit earlier. So yeah, turn it over to you, Mari. And 
And yes, yeah. anonymous attendee, um, PBS is great. They've actually done another little mm -hmm. bit about the American chestnut earlier. I think it was in April and it just came out. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, for several of you, you may have had email communication with me about the screening of the film um, and the questions about how to view the film, DVD copies. So I'm gonna dive into the um, hardcore logistics of the film. What I will say um, to, to begin with is that this isn't a normal promotional project. It's not a film that was supported by a large, you know, um, studio house or something like that. This is very grassroots oriented film production. And so what is typical um, after advice from the filmmakers and others is that the first part of the rollout is generally with public and private screenings at, at um, those locations and venues. Um, we are planning, and I'm gonna get into specifics later, a wide screening for um, American Chestnut supporters and email subscribers that will be happening in the fall. And I'm also gonna touch on about the film festivals as well. So, and then our, our goal and hope is that in 2024, we're thinking that the film would be then open for an entire audience. So ag again, this is why we um, did the film for a more broad audience at first and why we also wanted it to be evergreen and not go too hardcore into the science specifics because then we didn't want to um, have the film be you know, irrelevant uh, as soon as it was published because things are constantly being adjusted and tweaking. So I'm gonna go into uh, my part of the presentation. So our end goal for this film, and this is, you know, any kind of project that we work on, uh, you have to ask yourself, what are you wanting to achieve with it? So we do encourage people to attend or host a screening. Uh, the screenings are, um, so far we have several mapped out already. You can see that on the website. I actually need to update it again this weekend with several more that have come in. Um, so any public or private venue that you feel would be of interest, we would love for those venues to screen the film. There is no charge to screen the film. And I'm gonna go into that also in the next slide. Um, so if you wanna share the film website on your own personal social media, we would love that or for your organization's social media. Uh, we actually have a template pitch that I've sent to some people um, that describes the film. And we are in the process of developing an electronic press kit that I will also make available on the website for people who want to send this film to um, interested public and private venues um, for a screening. Our ultimate goal after the film, when people watch it, is how to get involved. And, you know, with any nonprofit, you're always asking people to get involved from a very passive to a very active phase from financial to non-financial. So what we really hope is that after people watch the film, that they will wanna get involved in one of the 16 chapters that ranges all the way along the native range of the American chestnut from Maine to Alabama. So there are plenty of ways. So for example, this is June and they all the chapters are very busy in pollinations. And the pollination process, even from what I have learned, takes several weeks a lot of hands, a lot of time in the sun, um, thousands of uh, flowers and monitoring of trees and all of that happens with volunteers. So once you get out there, then you really see what it means to be involved. And this is a, it's a very physical process. So we're hoping that once people see the film, they will want to get engaged and to assist um, volunteer with these pollinations and plantings and harvesting tabling at events. All the chapters have meetings where people can come and ask questions and learn more. So that would be a huge part. And of course, we can't be um, where we are today without membership and the donations that people make by becoming a general member, even becoming a seed level member. And of course, at the least, follow us on social media and subscribe to our email newsletter. Now, there's a reason why I am going to encourage people to subscribe to the email newsletter, and that is um, for the fall, when we are going to release um, a wide screening of the film for anyone who is on our email list. 
So that's, we will give out a private code and a private link and we'll open the film for a, a period of time for that screening. We're working out all the details now. And our goal and hope is to also probably bring back Rod and Adams on um, for a discussion or a Q&A maybe the following day for people to ask now that they have seen the film, what their questions might be about the film. And I think I see some questions maybe. I'm gonna pause for a second before going on to the next slide. Marcy, that's, um, yes, we can do sending out the link privately for people to preview the film before they screen it at a public venue. Um, there's not a minimum, Anna, for the number of viewers. It's more about location, which is if it's a public or private venue, we're not um, managing individual home screenings at this time. Uh, we don't have the staffing and the resources to manage home screenings. Uh, let's see. There's a question in here about a garden club. Yes. Um, so, Carol, if you will reach out to me through the website or you can email chestnutfilm at acf.org, we can definitely talk about and brainstorm some ways there. Um, let's Lori, see. I can I can feed you questions too if you don't want to have to to read them. I feel okay. like I'm kind of shirking my hope my host duties because you guys are so on top of it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Uh, I'm, I'm just jumping in there and I, I, I haven't been on a chat. Having met chat. you, I'm not surprised at all. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go to the next slide here. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, in promoting and screening the film. Uh, public and private venues can screen the film. There are there is no fee. Um, donations are encouraged. We have also re received requests from people to have a American Chestnut representative, either regional science coordinator, even the president, Jules, um, at some of the screenings to answer questions. Those are being handled on a case by case basis because of resources of time and staff and being able to schedule those around their work. Unfortunately, June through October is a pretty busy time um, for all the volunteers and staff at TACF. But um, we are accommodating those where we can and we they just require a little bit more logistics and scheduling. If it's going to be extensive travel, we may request an honorarium to offset the travel expenses. So that's um, addressing if you want to have a TACF rep at your screening. Um, I also wanted to say that we've already hosted several screenings with chapters, have some fun, have popcorn. When we launched it at a private uh, screening on April 22nd at our local Arboretum, that's what we did. We had popcorn and we have some film posters, um, things like that. It, it, it was a fun event and we the Arboretum was a perfect place to screen it. Now for the screening process, if you go to the website, um, you will see here, uh, this, this is the main website and you click on the screenings page and you scroll down, you will see that you can actually submit a screening form or view upcoming screenings. So if you submit a screening form, you will get a pop-up form like this. Once you submit that form, um, it actually goes straight into our inbox and then you will automatically receive a second link. So the form is just asking you the, all the details of where and when you plan to screen the film. You will then receive a screening hub link like this that moves you to the next step. Because of certain licensing rights that are in the film for music, um, some of the film footage, we did have a screening license agreement that we do need all the venues to sign. And then once you have signed that, we will add your screening to our website if it's a public screening. And we can even help promote it on social media if you tag us. And we'll even add an RSVP link. Now I'm gonna dive into, it's a password protected link also when we send that to you. Our goal is to send the screening link at least 10 days in advance, but once you submit the screening um, agreement, you will automatically receive this link, which has all the promotional materials here for you. And in this link is a Google Drive folder, and you'll be able to download the poster, the TACF logo. There's also a film survey, and there's some educational materials on this link that you can use 
depending on how you are planning to um, uh, host your screening. So if you're wanting to just print materials for your audience and have it out, or if you're wanting to email this, um, or you're using, using it to create your own invitation, all the material is here. We also have a QR code for donations that goes straight to offsetting the cost of this film. As we've said before, this film has been some time in the making, and uh, I don't think anybody knew at the time how long it would take and the costs involved in developing a film, even if it's, um, you know, grassroots level documentaries such as this one. Um, now back to, oh, hard copy. Um, also in the screening, we want to make sure that people understand it is 53 minutes. When you get the screening link, it will have two different download versions, a 1080, which is uh, mostly, usually most venues can handle that, and also an HD version. So the HD version is over seven gigabytes, and then you will need to make sure you have the correct space for that. The details are on the website as well, everything I'm saying here, and make sure that your audio and lighting is appropriate. Um, some places forget that they have windows and they need to make sure that if they're hosting a screening, it may, may be best to do it at dusk or in the evening. Um, with that being said, uh, and to also leave time for no, more questions. Do. Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hard copies. So uh, the screening link is a download link um, to download from a private Vimeo showcase. We have had requests for a DVD and that is available. It is $20. And the reason for that is because of the fee for burning the film. And it's not the normal burning of the film. We had to include copyright protection on the download, on the burning of the film, on the CD, the packaging um, and the shipping costs. There is no money being made on the DVD copy. So that is, in fact, there's probably a little bit of a loss when I really calculate that. So you can request a hard copy. And because of the licensing rights um, that are included in the film, we are requesting that the film be shipped back. And when we ship it to you, it would include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We will not have hard copies ready for probably another a month and a half. And that beca is because the film is actually undergoing a couple of other additional slight tweaks um, that we need to make before we actually finalize that film. I did go into the screening kit and what that hub includes which is all this material here um, for you to download and use. Uh, let's see, did I, I think I did. Um, okay, Kendra, <laughs> questions? All right, I think you covered a lot of this, Mari, but just to make sure that we get everyone's explicit questions answered. Uh, Daniel is just wondering, is the only way to see the film to host a screening? Sounds like if you're patient, that is not the only way, but if you guys just wanna to briefly touch on that timeline again, that would be great. So Daniel, just um, at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna, there's a last slide, which is a link to all the links we've talked about in this presentation. And one of them is a sign up that goes straight to the American Chestnut um, email subscription. And that's all you have to do. So if you are subscribed to the American Chestnut Foundation's email subscription, you will be able to see the film. We're going to announce details about date, time, and location, or date and time, probably sometime for this fall. Um, and then you'll be able to see the film. And then like Mari mentioned earlier, eventually it will be streaming to the public, but that's probably gonna be in 2024, um, but there will be a, a showing um, in the fall. Yes. Great leading up to that. Yeah. Um, so not quite related, but John was just wondering that he's glad to know that screening is free. Will we, will we be showing any clips um, today? I am going to go out on a limb and say no, um, but I am going to repost the website for the, the documentary. The trailer is there. So if you want to see a few clips, I think that's probably the best place to do that. And if you guys have anything to add to that, feel free. Yep, the trailer right now is 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 the best. That's 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 what you want to watch, and that's what's out there. Uh, but definitely watch the trailer if you haven't, and and share that with others too. We'd love that. Yeah, awesome. Um, 
Marcy is wondering, she submitted a screening form this morning for something coming up in November, and she's just wondering um, about the turnaround time between um, submitting a form and actually getting that all set up and ready to go. I've been trying to respond to all requests with usually within 24 to 48 hours. It doesn't always happen. Um, I do have other clients and all of a sudden there's been a huge interest. So my goal is always 24 to 48 hours, but Marcy, definitely I respond within a week, which is why I need at least a two week um, submission time. And then we, once you submit that form, you automatically, we have set up email triggers that automatically respond with the Screening Hub link where you can automatically download the promotional materials. All I do is confirm to you that we have received your signed screening license agreement. And once that we receive that, it's basically considered official and I add it to the website unless there are specific questions that you have. Um, and sometimes it just might take me another day or two to get it added to the website, but then consider it done. And then we send out the film download link 10 days ahead of the screening. If you need it before then, if you need to preview the film or your testing equipment, you just need to let me know that. And then we will um, accommodate that. But there's been a lot of interest. So a lot, a lot of people are, are wanting to screen it and it's, it's really exciting. We're we have some some that. big screenings that are in the works um, in Tennessee and in Georgia that we're still working on the details of, and uh, we'll announce that. Okay. okay awesome. Any other? All right. Any other? I have three somewhat all all, all great minds thinking alike. Um, <laughs> Clark and Kevin are both wondering if the video will eventually be distributed to PBS. And Edward over in the chat is wondering about also making it available for community access television stations. We're definitely hoping to get it aired on PBS. Uh, we've got some contacts uh, with some folks that work with PBS directly and, and we're hoping to, to work with them for an eventual, um, so that will air hopefully on, on PBS. We don't know yet, but we are working toward that. And, you know, I, I have to say, and, and Mari might have, you know, might be able to say a couple other things, I don't know, but we've been so focused on getting the film done and, and, and finalizing the film. Um, we do have all of these types of, that's on our radar and um, that's kind of next steps, but um, the, we have been hyper-focused on, on the film. And, and again, there are a few more tweaks to be done. So we're still kind of, not exactly there yet, but we're so close. So, so very close. we're very, very close. So, but once, once that happens and, and, and we can say it's done and finalized, then we're going to start diving into, to, um, some of this discussion about, about, um, um, you know, where the, where the film can be, um, shown, including festivals. Um, so after the film is complete, which we're hoping is in the next two to three weeks, we had a couple of edits to make um, just from based on some of the feedback that we did receive um, from some of the screenings. We realized those were important to include. What we will do first is submit it to film festivals um, through filmfreeway.com. And that distributes out um, the available films to all the film festivals. And then we will also, we already have a list developed of many theaters um, that we wish to send out the electronic press kit about the film. So I hope to have that electronic press kit also completed in the next two weeks. And then I will add that to the website and we will start to actually solicit for screenings to those venues as well. We have lots of independent film houses here in Asheville and I know that, that there are many up and down the East Coast. So. We will have that um, email pitch ready. It, it actually is ready and the electronic press kit ready. And then once that's ready, we'll probably have another slew of screenings occurring. Um, awesome. Um, there's a question about how to reach out to you directly, Mari. Would the, is the chestnut film at acf.org likely the best email for specific questions about screenings? Yes, it comes to me, but also if you're on rescuingtheamericanchestnut.com, there is a form there, and when you fill that out, that also comes to me. So chestnutfilm at acf.org, or just fill out a contact form on the website, and I get that. All right, and I see Cassie is um, 
kindly typing an answer to Margaret. Margaret was wondering how many folks are on Chestnut Chat. We've got just over 100 attendees on right now, which is fantastic. Um, uh, uh, let's see, here's one question from John. Oops, he is wondering if in the future some part or another becomes dated, will, dated, will it be possible to tweak and release a 2.0 version? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that for right now, I cannot see the only thing to me that would really outdate this is if is if the tree is out there because this is all about the mission and the hopeful future. We made sure that the science um wasn't so detailed that it would time stamp the film, you know, for three years from now. So as an ongoing restoration mission. I could only see that really that would be the only detail that would really. I mean, you never know what can happen, right. um, but yeah, I mean, it's a good question. And that's something that, um, you know, that's we were trying, we're, we're trying to avoid that um, because, um, you know, once a film is out, it's out and to, 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 to tweak the same film could cause some issues, but um we hope to avoid that, but again, with with some of the, you know, with, with some of the shorts that we hope to produce, um, any any, especially on the science side of things, um, and progress made there, um, we hope to produce a, a short um, that will offer more updated information when that when that happens. We did want a version that was suitable for um, younger students. There's a lot of middle schools and, you know, students in science in middle school and into high school mm -hmm. where this film may not necessarily be something that they just are so compelled to watch and sit through for 52 minutes or 53 minutes. So we have enough content that we did want to create a version for um, educators of that ilk. And we also, of course, a science version, because we do know that science is what is making this happen, uh, in addition to all the people who are so involved, um, and all the many types of people. So that is some of the feedback that we have received already in the film survey responses. So when we send this out, we also send it out with a blind survey link where um, people can give us their feedback. And that has been the feedback from people is how surprised they are at all the different types of people that are involved in this mission. Um, Jules, this is probably a question for you. Um, Helen is wondering if by being on chat, Chestnut Chat today, folks are automatically added to our distribution list. I don't believe so. I don't think you are signing up for anything other than the webinar when you sign up for Chestnut right. Chat. We are saving those emails and just, uh, you know, plugging you into something you didn't sign up for. So <laughs> what's the best way for them to sign up for the um, I'm adding it in the list? I'm going to add it in the chat right now. Beautiful. And and Helen, if you're getting emails from TACF, if you get our appeals, emails, our eSprout, things like that, then, then you're on the list. Yep. Um, and if you have no idea what that is, then you should sign up. <laughs> <laughs> then you're not on the list, but right. If you're getting information from us with with different blasts in our eSprout newsletter and things like that, you're you're on the list. So right. this last part of the presentation, I did put a link to all the things we've talked about today, including this link I just shared in the chat, which is how to subscribe to the email newsletter. And then once you're subscribed there, you'll get the announcement about the film uh, viewing this fall. Uh, right. Carol is wondering if we'll have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation made available. Um, I believe, Jules, that we typically, when we post the link or post the video to Chestnut Chat, we usually also post a few materials that associated. Be, exactly. Correct. Beautiful. Yeah. So that um, will be on our Chestnut Chat um, recordings. Uh, I think it might be Chestnut, is it Chestnut Chat Archives? I don't know what the, but it's it going to be on our, chat. all of our, yeah, all of our past previous chats um, will, are on a resource page on our website. And yeah, the presentation will be part of, of that once it's posted. Um, yeah, and actually I should say too, just um, kind of a fun development for Chestnut Chat. We actually have a directory now of our archives. So you can actually like much more quickly scroll through and see all of the wonderful topics we've covered and get to those quickly without having to scroll through 
40 um, big blurbs. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to our new web admin, Hal. I'm assuming he made that magic happen, but um, it's a little more organized. We, we've got a lot of content on there. Um, I really do, yeah. And we, we Thomas, do. we do know Indiana's in the range and there is an Indiana chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation. Yes. Yes. Um, and we have I, still some questions about the availability of DVDs um, into the future. Um, can you specifically speak to, is this something at some point, once we're done screening, will we have DVDs available for folks to purchase or will it just be out in the sort of um, YouTube ether for folks to watch online? I think that's a question for the national to address later. We we will have the DVDs for shipping for screenings. And so there probably would be, my guess would be that there would be next year when it's open for um, uh, wide screening online. So I do think so. We would just have to set up that process for yeah. requesting and, and drop shipping that. It's a good question that we, yeah. we should add to our list of things, <laughs> these next steps moving forward with the film. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of folks still like that, you know, physical copy. I actually, yeah. my husband just got a, a CD player to, you know, replace <laughs> old CD players. We have so many of those discs, even though we haven't listened to them in an awful long time. It's still nice to have those hard copies. And now we can date ourselves and like show them to our kids. Hey, just, I bought a record player not too long ago for my old uh, records. So awesome. <laughs> that goes a step back further. A lot of the larger, older theaters, they still have DVDs, mm -hmm. and so they are requesting that. So yeah. um, we are yeah, some going of to be either. burning a lot of those. It is a three-week turnaround time, and so once the final film is um, final, final, then we will start that process immediately of getting those burned and made. Awesome. Um, we do have another question, Mari, you mentioned the time it took to produce the film and that it was rather expensive. Um, can you share any of the details about that, what that process, what that time frame was? And I think Jules can answer that because I, it's been going on for a while. Yeah, so the production, the I believe the first shoot for the film was in 2016. <laughs> so it's 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 been a while. Um, and then that was with another filmmaker. And so that's what Rob was talking about earlier was some of the footage that, that, that they used in the current film came from, from him. So he got, and they do get credit in that. Yeah, they, they, he, he gets credit in, in that. And so there was a transition a couple of years down the road between him and then, um, going with Rod and Adams and, and working on a more local level um, because the first filmmaker I think was in New York, I believe. Um, so so it's, it's, it, has, it has been a lengthy process and COVID caused a, a, a number of hiccups and delays um, for obvious reasons. And um, there was some delay in the transition of the first filmmaker to Rod and Adams. So yeah, it's, it, it, has, it has been a, but it has been a long process, but we were, determined to move through it and and make it happen and, and a lot of changes in the way that the film was being developed we kind of restructured some of the story in there um, when we started developing the goals uh, so yeah it a, a long a long time in the making but we feel like we've got a the end, we feel like the end result is is going to be really beneficial um, to our work and to the tree we hope so um, and yeah, costly, I don't know. I, I don't know about it's, <laughs> I mean, I- That's why they were I'm thinking not, the sponsors first on this, on this presentation. <laughs> Maybe we can do it, yeah. We, we, and we, we are asked, you know, we are um, providing a QR code in, in the kit for screening so that folks can donate because we could certainly use some donations to, to help support the making of the film. That's for sure. It's, it's um, cost a lot. Brad, you're absolutely right. The other day when I was looking at the list of screenings, I, I don't think we realized how many would be coming in. So we are going to be revamping how the screenings are listed and having a sort function by location. 
um, to answer that question, Brad. So yes, we're seeing the same thing. The um, presentation today won't be available. It won't be available today. Um, it, it will be available as soon as we can. We, we try to get it done within, well, we, tr we try to get it done within a week or two, but at least before the next Chestnut Chat. So that's, that's the goal, um, now, to have it published before, before the next chat. But we hope yeah, to do it within a week or two. I do have a question, Kendra. If I make a PDF of the presentation, are you able to email that to the people that were registered? That would be more of a question for Jules and, and Sarah. I don't know if we've, I, I don't have access to that list, but um, Sarah would have I'm access just feeling to that. It. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never done a chestnut chat, <laughs> so, but um, I think it's through PSU, right? So I think Sarah would be able, Sarah would be able to answer that question and she's not here, but we can ask, we, we can ask Sarah about that. Yeah. Worst case, you know, the materials get posted along with the, the YouTube video. So once that's, that's up. It'll definitely be there at some point, but if we can get it to you all sooner My and figure out a way to do that, we'll do that. And yes, demand is good. My goal <laughs> is to get the, the chestnut chat up on YouTube, hopefully by the end of next week. I don't see why it couldn't be, so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't see any more open questions. Um, I think we've had a pretty, pretty great conversation here. You got a lot of Absolutely. information out about the film. I did get a chance to watch it recently and it was it was a lot of fun. My husband was watching it with me um, and I, I think was getting annoyed at me just pointing out who everyone was. I'm like, oh, that's that person. That's that person. I know who that is. <laughs> so I think for those of you who've been around for a long time, if you haven't seen it yet, I think you'll really enjoy getting to see a lot of your chestnut friends on screen. So, um, well, if no one has any, any objections, it's Friday afternoon, it's 1247. We technically can run until one, but I don't think we all need to sit here and stare at each other for 15 minutes. So um, <laughs> I would like to I say think we can wrap it up. I'd like to thank everybody who yeah. attended and thank for you. all the excellent questions and for your interest. And um, yeah, we really appreciate it. And we really are excited about this and, you know, bring in the American chestnut and its story um, to a lot more people through the film and, and yeah, hopefully getting a lot more engagements and interest and participation. So thank you all for, thank you. for joining us. Great. Um, yeah. And as for next Chestnut Chat, I'm actually not sure what the topic is. Um, yeah. I think we have a few things that we're thinking about or are we doing the farm next week, next month, Jules? You know, I don't know. I do feel like something is scheduled, but I'm not sure. This is where I'm not a very good Sarah. It, I'm sure <laughs> she's got this figured out. There will be an announcement yeah. shortly with the next <laughs> invitation to the next Chestnut Chat um, topic TBD. So, and if you always tuned. signed up, you'll get uh, you'll get a notification about the next Chestnut Chat and an e blast. So, if you're signed up to our newsletter, you'll get that too. So, um, awesome. yeah, but we'll send something out about it as soon as we know and have it. Um, have all the information ready to go. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, Mari Jules, thank you so much. Cassie, thanks for helping thanks. out with QA. And you, Cassie, yep. Yeah. Happy no problem. Friday, everyone. All right. Happy Friday. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> See ya. See ya.